12th of September, nearly three months ago, and that was at Nebraska. At Nebraska, and other than that, they rolled through the Big 12. It was really something to see. And they avenged that loss to Nebraska, handed Nebraska their only loss of the year, 3-0 at home. So not much really scares the long -hands. And they haven't had a lot of matches in which they've even lost a single game, better yet the whole match itself. They have pretty much dominated. Dyson calling it, hitting the back line and calling it in. The Longhorns not happy about the call. Lions person hesitated just a second, but it looked like she maybe got the line. Boy, that was one of those, and it was just so tough. And you're, you're right, she did hesitate. The line judge did a little bit, but that's one of those where that shadow of the ball was right there. Huge block that time by Bethany Johansson. And you start to sense that the Trojans are feeling a little bit more confident with each passing play. They are. They are definitely in system right now. And you can see that Texas is not. They are definitely a little tighter on the offensive side. I think Angle's been pretty consistent for them, though, so far. Well, Ashley Angle. Ashley Angle has been the player so far when they needed a kill. Big left hand goes right at the block. The touch. USC's back row couldn't get to it. Angle's fourth kill. They probably want to try and get her the ball a little bit more often, huh? I think so. I definitely think so. Just a sophomore for this team. She's out earlier, seven matches with an injury, comes back though, and she really filled big void. Speaking of the long lead Longhorns, that ball went down in a hurry. Look at the ground that Hooker covered, that lateral <laughs> movement. She and McGee getting over there, covering the territory. There is just no room there. So we are 2-2 here in the early going of game two. Trojans with a 1-0 lead. And there once again is Ashley Engel, this time on her more natural right side, the left-hander with a put away. And the Longhorns getting the only their second lead of this match. Big opening in the back. They bring in Kylie Hall right now to serve a junior defensive specialist for this team. And it's when you always talk about a designated server, what happens next is that server usually misses the serve, and that's what happened there. It's one of the rules of broadcasting, Never I think. Fails. Uh, we, I jinx her every uh, we, time. We talk about, oh, that player's making a great play, and boom, the ball goes in the net or out of bounds. It's one of those rules of broadcasting. That's right. I got to let him serve first. Angle going wide that time, looking for a touch, not seeing one. Donna Carter confirms there was not one. That ball goes wide. Right between the legs of the line judge. I think that was the right call. Angle, that was a play we hadn't seen yet coming in from the back row. And the scramble play. You just get the sense that if USC is scrambling, it really favors their style of play. And every scramble rally so far it has been a Trojan point, it seems. You know, they are smiling, coming together. They look like they're enjoying themselves. Things are clicking. Things are working for them. And Texas still looks a little flustered. They look a little frustrated. Durango with another tough serve. And that's one of those you talked about earlier. Will not go as a service ace, but had all the same effect taking Texas out of their offense. You're right. They got the point. USC up again. And Jared Elliott forced to call a quick timeout. It is 6-3. USC leads in game two. We talked earlier about one of the things that the Trojans had to do, and it was serving, and this is a great example. Maybe not an ace, Krista, but same effect. You get the point. Urango, tough serve. They get it up, but then it forces Hooker to make a decision. What am I going to do with it? And what she ends up doing with it is, instead of hitting that perfect second ball, she gets the double hit call, and it's a point for USC. Of the timeout looked like Jared Elliott made a kind of a, a lineup decision change a little bit to uh, on the side out play to bring Engel back to the left side just for that side out purpose. He's a natural, of course, being naturally on the right side, and that got the ball back into the hands of the Longhorns as they now trail 4-6. Brandy McGee back to serve for Texas. She's been pretty quiet on the offensive end of things. I think they got to get her more involved as well. Once again, the, such a smart player, Diane Copenhagen, with her eighth kill, no errors so far, hitting 667. And I'm not sure she's had a single ball where it has gone clean, but she just keeps finding hands and using them. Going right at it, that time, Engel, and she said, my bad afterwards, did not have her hands in the right angle and went out of bounds. 
And now something a little different. Couture staying in to serve with a jump serve. Usually they try to rest her here, but looks like McHaley is saying, nope, we can rest when we're at, done with the season, huh? How big? We just talked about serving, and they're getting it from multiple players that time. No, no attempt whatsoever, really, to be able to get that up. And there is Lauren Pellini with a quick attack. And one of the things we talked earlier is the pace of this match thus far really favors the Trojans. Texas wants to be playing fast and quick volleyball. They're doing it occasionally on side out, but not that well in transition so far. Yeah, it's all about that pass. And that one right there, that quick in the pace, that Pellini right where she wanted to be. The long rally is USC finds a way to handle the on the hooker and off the block and, and out of bounds. And once again, USC right back on the attack in offense, looking very comfortable. And the back row, you talked earlier about the fact that Couture, they'll set her for almost anywhere that time in the back row. Yeah, they can, they can get her in any area, any corner on the floor. Stuff that time. Very smart play, Destiny Hooker going for the roll shot. And that time, Zoe Garrett saw it coming. Hooker saw the block. She knew she had to try to go up and over the last second. What a great instinct by Zoe Garrett, the freshman, to stick that hand up and roll it right over. This is really breaking down rapidly for Texas. They simply don't look like they're in sync right now at all. Texas coming back with Julianne Fossett back into the back row. Jerry Dillon trying to change the lineup a little bit here, but thus far, game one all the way over to the Trojans, 130-25, and game two thus far has been a carbon copy of the first one. Yeah. She's their big hitter. She's reaching out there, getting down. The 6'4 senior with a pancake. How do you like that, huh? You gotta love it. It's definitely going their way. I mean, Texas just does not look like the same team we saw yesterday. No, this is not the team that defeated Florida here, that took the great crowd here at Gainesville out of this thing, that controlled the match. This Texas team, and one of the things I think, Jerry Elliott's team's not as physical at the net in this one. They've got to get a blocking game going. 13-5, Jared Elliott calling his second timeout. The Trojans lead the Longhorns 13-5 in game two. Back in Gainesville, Florida, 13-5. USC leads in game two, having led 30-25. For up to the minute news for everything that is college sports, log on to ESPNU.com. This online service is a gateway to the best in college sports content from ESPN, combining the latest news, scores, features, video highlights, podcasts, and much more. If you don't have ESPNU, be sure to log on to ESPNU.com and type in your zip code at the top of the page or call your local cable operator or satellite provider. Log on to ESPNU.com today. And in the meantime, the Longhorns find a way to get that ball back. Look at the hitting from Texas. Below 100 here in wow. game two. That really does say it all. USC had a game plan coming in. They've been serving well. They've mixed up the offense. And they also had a nice presence at the net for the block. And Texas now, after a timeout, trying to just chip away, trying to get things back in rhythm. And this is Julianne Fawcett. She's been awfully quiet so far, Krista. We haven't mentioned her name at all, and she has just been a phenomenal player. Hooker needs to get going also. You know, they're really handling Hooker's jumps are pretty nicely so far. Fawcett is dumping it over, and once again, back on offense go the Trojans, and from the back row once again, guess who? Asha Kachor once again lighting up Longhorns. Eight kills now for Couture, and I think Taylor Carico, the sophomore setter for USC, has done an excellent job in guiding the team. She looks very composed out there. She's gotten Copenhagen involved as well. And that is Fassette going.
going right through the block that time. Big physical player at the net herself. Does not look like or play like a freshman. No, not at all. <laughs> it is really impressive to see. And so many of these players uh, to have national team experience. Seven players from Texas played as part of the U.S. national team program in the offseason, and USC has players as well. And I think that experience shows you what these young players can do. And now the Longhorns once again with their second straight point trying to chip away. Allison Jennings, the outstanding senior Libro with the serve. Part of the U.S. Speaking of that, part of the U.S. women's A2 team. Plenty of international experience there. So USC right back. They, I don't think Texas has been able to really put together more than a couple of points at a stretch before the Trojans come, came up with some kind of an answer. Carrico again making the decision to take that second ball. They are up 29 to 21 kills right now. And Moriarty returning the favor. She goes over in two. Get the ball right back for the Longhorns, but it's really interesting. The Longhorns just can't seem to find a way to string a lot of points together, which they did so well yesterday against the Gators. Yeah, really controlling the game. Moriarty right back at you. you got to figure that the setters, it's a competitive thing up there. It's like, you're going to do that, I'm going to do that. But sure. Boy, oh boy, she has just been unstoppable. She has, and she's just got such a calm demeanor out there. She shows the excitement and energy afterwards, but when she's going up for the approach, calm, cool, collected. And re referee Donna Carter showing Jer Jared Elliott the first yellow card of our match. Jared complaining about one of the sets. I'm sure trying to also get his team a little bit more excited and enthused. Ball set that time from the right side with the put away. So the Longhorns have been able to kind of slow down USC and go back and forth inside out game. The problem is they spotted USC five points in the early going. Yeah, digging a little bit of a hole and then you got to try to get back. It's not always easy to do here in rally scoring. Net violation that time on Texas. On the way up, I think Destiny Oker got that on the way up that time. Unfortunate for the Longhorns on that one because I truly think that they had the advantage on that one. I think they were going to get that point, and instead they get the net violation. Destiny Hooker going up against a, a much smaller player, and especially with her leap. Everyone's a much smaller player, I think. Speaking of which, Destiny Hooker that time. Interesting that time they brought her from the right side into the middle. That was a great job by the back row to get that serve by Urangos up. It was a perfect pass and then the finish, and that's what they've got to be able to do, that passing game, giving them some scoring. Plus stopping Urangos' jump serve, which has been very effective so far. Very effective. That one right there was a nice one, but they were able to handle it. But thus far, the Longhorns have no answer for Aja Kachor. She has been devastating. You know, she's, again, just such a relaxed demeanor about her, but it's amazing what she can do. And when you see her serve as well, it can be very effective, the jump serve. We don't always see the jump serve from her, but she's been using it here today. And that time, the two back-to-back -back jump servers for the Trojans were shut down by the Longhorns real quickly, which is a credit to that Longhorn passing game. But they still dug a five-point hole they have not been able to climb out of yet. I haven't seen them go on a run, and I, I would think this team would be able to figure out a way to do one. One's taking advantage of those miss hits, those errors, if USC presents them. Lauren Pellini that time taking advantage of that overpass and knocking the ball off the Trojans' hands and out of bounds, and that's a, fr a pretty quick point here. And the Trojans now only lead 18-14. Once again, it looks like Texas is beginning to loosen up a little bit. But, attack by angle goes long. And that's the one you need to go right there. You're on a bit of a roll with your serving. You've got to get that one to go in for you. You've got to be able to fall through. The winner of this match moves on to the national semifinals. And they take on the winner of the Stanford UCLA match, which will take place tonight at 11.30 Eastern Time on ESPNU. Texas beginning to start showing some of their physical presence at the net. A couple of blocks and a couple of stops. 16-19 here. The Longhorns starting to make a bit of a charge. They're starting to really spread out the offense. They kept it.